Bons dias, sejam bem-vindos. Don't worry, I won't speak in Portuguese more. I will do my presentation in English and I will be presenting the intervention content. So we have to do a lot of decision making about which content will be available for the participant on the know-how uh, project to see if they will go and uh, they will build capacity to maintain their weight after the initial weight loss. And the know-how project has the big W. And the, the big W represents a lot of things. It represents uh, weight loss. It, it represents wearables, like this one that I have here, and that you may know that are pretty prevalent. So it's uh, almost everybody is starting to use th these things. And uh, we use the, the Fitbit uh, wearable on our, uh, on our toolkit, and it's a big part of it as, it, as it is the weight scale that we use. And it also mentions, or uh, the W is also important to represent the World Wide Web because that's where we are going to present or make available the toolkit to the participant. But it also represents the ups and downs of losing weight and regaining weight. And uh, as you have seen, people tend to regain weight and uh, there's a lot of knowledge already known or knowledge available to make our decisions in terms of, of which will be the content that we'll be um, using on the toolkit. And as I was saying, there's a lot of things that we already know, so a lot of evidence, but mostly they are uh, available or they were tested in face-to-face -face interventions. And that was not the case of the know-how toolkit that is going to be presented on uh, a digital media. As uh, Liz and Kirby already mentioned, so we uh, develop on the first stage what we can call uh, an evidence foundation so that we can better make our decisions about which content we will be using on the know-how toolkit and which ones we won't be using. And we also did uh, a systematic review about which technologies are better to uh, help people change their behavior in terms of long-term uh, weight loss uh, experience. And uh, all of this, as I mentioned, is mostly available for face-to-face -face interventions. Uh, there is quite less uh, evidence around about what works in terms of the digital world. And we were aiming to use digital behavior change techniques. We know that there are some systematic reviews already available, but they were mostly for health behavior change, so not specific to the weight loss maintenance uh, context. And the ones that uh, showed up, showed up later or after we start developing the, the content of the toolkit. For example, this one, we were already developing the content of the toolkit when this uh, systematic review was made available. But we went for it and we noticed that uh, it's pretty much the same things that we were developing, pretty much the same strategies that we were uh, engaging in while developing the, the contents. So we were pretty happy that we were making, it seems, the right decisions at the time, and at the same time, we were really cautious. And, and I really like this expression that was used some time ago on, on a TED talk, uh, that is the expression optimism, because it seems that people or that society is believing that HAPS and M Health and E Health will solve all health issues uh, that is prevalent or that, that are among our society. And but maybe that's not the case. For example, wearables are known to facilitate behavior, not to drive behavior. And I can let you know about when little story that happened with some participant in another study that was using uh, an accelerometer. And she mentioned, does this make me go faster? Because she was believing that by using that, she will go faster, she will move more. That's not the case. It will not drive the behavior, but it will facilitate behavior. Another thing that makes us cautious is that there is plenty of choices around and plenty of evidence around the, what it's called the behavior change techniques. And I know this is unreadable because it's a, the list of all the behavior change techniques that were um, uh, made available on this Susan Mixick taxonomy. And all the theories, so there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of options to make a decision upon. So this was the challenge that we had, and so the know-how project was developed to test one uh, evidence-based 
intervention with the content on a digital world, not on a face-to-face -face intervention. And this is going to be done, or this is being done right now, with over 1,000 people in three countries uh, around Europe. So it's a big trial, and we're really happy to do this. But I'm going to speak about the content, because if we're going to test something, we have to make, again, some decision-making about which content will be uh, available for the people or for the participant. And this is a complex intervention. We knew this from the start. So we are going to test several theories, several uh, behavior exchange techniques. We know that some of them will work in a certain way when they are presented independently or individually, but maybe they will be interacting with each other when they are presented uh, simultaneously. So we have developed what is called a factorial design. Kirby just mentioned how, how this works. So we have a self-monitoring group that doesn't get any behavior change technique or any theory, theoretical based intervention. Then we have um, emotional regulation group, another one that gets the self-determination and self-regulation theory, and the fourth one receives both. And this is complex, so we decided to use the complex systems uh, development uh, from the MRC, so we went back to the, their support to build uh, and to help us build the, the, the intervention. So the first thing we did was a logic model. So a diagram that could help us understand which components will be available for the participant. And also, that component will be affecting a specific mediator, a mechanism, for example, increasing, increasing motivation, that will affect our outcome. And our desired outcome is that people maintain their weight. So this was one first step, and I'll show you around uh, a little bit more the logic model in a moment. And for every content that we built, we had to develop a digital implementation. So we know how behavior change techniques work on face-to-face -face interventions, but that's not the same on a digital intervention. So how can an audio affect behavior? How can a video affect behavior? How can text, images, whatever, affect behavior? So we, have to build, we had to build around 300 implementations for every component of the toolkit. And every one of these implementations that we built were in a curriculum that we designed, one for the self-determination theory and self-regulation, another one for the emotion regulation uh, component or um, intervention arm. So there's a lot of work around this, and for every decision, we had to have evidence that states this is the best way to do uh, the, um, the intervention. All of, this was, all, all of these implementations were supposed to affect specific variables, like, for example, intrinsic motivation, as I mentioned. So this logic model mentions that, for example, we are going to work on psychoeducation. And we think that by using components of psychoeducation, we are going to decrease shame and self-criticism. And through these changes in, self, in shame, in self-criticism, uh, we expect that this will affect behavior change and uh, body weight uh, as an outcome. Finally, all of this is being uh, conducted or presented to the user in a specific context. They will not be only using the Fitbits or using the apps or using uh, our toolkit. They will be living. So there's a lot of things going around. And one of the things that concerns us the most is that technology evolves very fast. And we had to develop the toolkit in late 2016, and it has to stay as it is right now, as long as we test it for at least two or three years in the future. Just imagine if you have your phone with the same operating system for three years. Most of us will be, well, this is not fun anymore. Let's move to, the, to another one. But as it is a trial, we, we have this constraint. So with all this in mind, we um, develop uh, what we call the toolkit. The toolkit, so it's a, a set of instruments, a toolbox, let's say, of implementations that we are hoping that the, the participant will uh, bring into their behavior and then will uh, be able to uh, maintain their weights. The general concept was this one. So we're going to present a path to the user 
Uh, and that path, it's uh, presented on the trial start. But from the beginning, this, all the sessions, all the content is available to the user. So this means that they can go faster, slower. They can start from the beginning or from the middle. It's up to them. So they will have an active role instead of a passive role on uh, leaving the toolkit or uh, experience the toolkit. Another thing that we wanted as a concept was that we should provide as much modes of delivery, audio, video, text, um, uh, images, quizzes, so all sorts of landscapes so that the user can uh, experience and learn uh, how to maintain their weight loss. So this means that they can decide to jump a session, for example, or they can decide to go for, to a certain place that we were not thinking that they will go, so that's okay with us. And for the time period of the toolkit, they, it will be presented for six months on a weekly basis. Uh, again, they, go, they can go faster or slower, it's up to them. And after the six months, uh, they will be, uh, the, the content will be available for an extra 12 months. So a lot of time. Regarding the components of the toolkit, so we have a first all access component that it's mostly self-monitoring, and I'm going to do a demonstration here really fast. So this is how the toolkit looks like. This is the Portuguese version. We had to build in Portuguese, English, and Danish, an extra constraint. So it's visualization mostly, help people monitor their weight loss. They are, they are measuring their weight every day or every couple of days, and then they can visualize steps. Sleep is measured by the Fitbit tracker. And so, as you can see, it's uh, similar to what sometimes the apps themselves use. Then we had what we call the regular toolkit user communications. So, and what we did was we sent an email to everyone uh, on Tuesday, everyone that is participating on, of, on, the, on the toolkit again. And this is the Danish version. And it will prompt the user to a specific session or to a specific uh, content of the toolkit. Then we have the main course. The main course is the content itself. And we organize the, the, the content in a map. So imagine a map where we have specific places that you want to go. So we make some sort of a itinerary. I want to go here and then there and then there. That's how we present it to the user, and you can see it here. So it's this green thing. This is a city. Then you have a specific place that you want to go, and this is one of the content, one of the sessions. So images, and we used also videos, like this one. This is the English version. It, it has audio, but it's not connected. So we, these are really small, like one-minute videos, and each session has videos, texts, images, drag and drop quizzes, for example, like this, to help the participant engage in weight loss maintenance behaviors. And it's really fast. After this, five minutes, eight minutes, and it's done. So this means that it can be integrated on the day-to-day -day living of a specific, of, of, of the participant, instead of having one-hour sessions, and then the user will say, well, I have to go for this one-hour session every week for six, uh, six months, maybe that wouldn't work. Another exercise, just to show you what type of exercise we have, like this. This is in Danish, and this is for the emotion regulation. I just don't know what is written there. Don't, don't ask me. So depending on the answer, it will present a specific uh, answer, and the user is prompt to do something. Finally, the mini apps are the ones that are more interactive. So this, for example, the, the mini apps that I, I, I'm going to present is one for the self-regulatory processes to action planning, goal setting. So I want, I'm doing 9,000 steps and I want to do 10,000 steps. What should I do? I'm going to do this, walk after lunch. And with whom am I going to walk after lunch? Where am I, am I going to walk after lunch? When? So all these kind of tools help people uh, to establish goal settings in a more specific way, and it's available throughout the uh, intervention, so for 18 months. Finally, we had what we call the weight management project. It's, it has a lot of personalization. So for example, users can bookmark, say this is one session that I really like, so they bookmark it. 
or this one I didn't like, so they just say that I didn't like it. So they can revisit the toolkit. They can search on the toolkit, for example, for everything that has goals. And I just want, wanted to show you also that we have testimonies, and people can choose, I want to see the male testimony or the female testimony. So that's another level of individualization. Finally, all of the toolkit was built on a mobile-first perspective. So it was built to be used on mobiles, but it can be used also on tablets or PCs. So challenges. We have plenty of challenges. I know, I know my time is, is gone, but I just want to acknowledge the team that we had. We, we had to interact with the people that are from the, techn the technological side, let's say, and we have to say that we want this content on technology. And they sometimes told us that's not possible. So we had to find out other ways to, to, to implement this content. And now we have went through all sets of stages. So the first one was the better uh, version. Then we tested on a feasibility study. And now we have version 2.0. And Sarah will going, uh, is going to present the trial that we are testing the, the, this, tool, this version now. But as I mentioned, one of the biggest things that we are concerned of is that we cannot move the toolkit for over two, over two years. So I don't know what technology is going to look like in two years' time. So I'm pretty anxious. And uh, let's see how it goes. So thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio, for a very advanced digital presentation. Um, it's now open for a few questions. I would, though, before questioning, uh, like to t tell you all that you can look at the video that uh, Antonio was showing vi with sound in the exhibition hall. It's on display on several screens. And also, if you want to hear more about the toolkit, uh, later today, James Stubbs will be talking about that uh, in a session that I think starts half past four. So more about the know-how toolkit later on. But let's have a few questions. There's one there, please. Letizia Pritoni from Italy, congratulations, a great job. My question is, how do you integrate ICT support with medical or professional support for weight maintenance? So the job was done by, for, for, by, by the old team, so you are thanking everybody. So, but we just don't, so we focus on a specific um, uh, focus in, on, in terms of intervention and if someone is uh, using, for example, a medical advice during the trial is okay for us if they are, uh, because maybe that's what they did to lose weight and we are happy to bring this into the trial. So we didn't um, integrate specifically a spe or medical or physical activity or nutritional uh, advices on this. 